Hi everyone, so today we're going to be doing a three-part series of me planting some seedlings and working on some random little projects in the garden. Uh, just a uh, chillax Friday. So we're going to look at this spot really quick. This is actually um, a little bed that's next to the bench that I usually film on. This is supposed to be a drainage ditch, so the house that I live at, it's actually kind of sloping, so all the rainwater in cases of extreme flooding rushes down here so I put a bunch of plants that could deal with periods of drought but could also tolerate um, periods of being soaking wet. In here we have a hookera, cranium, hostas, iris, a chorus, a salvia, a hydrasia, hydrasia macrophylla, masja. In another video during winter time you probably saw me plant it. It's still doing great but we have a troubled child here and it's this big guy right here. So this is Bohormii, I'm probably mispronouncing that, Cybordii. It's a relative of salvias and mints and nettles. Um, it's from Europe. It's often called the stingless nettle because the leaves actually resemble another plant in the same big family called stinging nettle. This plant is usually grown for its big leaves big nice leaves too but in late in the season it throws off these spikes of flower that aren't that showing they tend to be tannish really thin nothing to write home about but the butterflies and moths really like them a lot so that's why I grew it the problem here is that it's actually taking up more space than I thought it would have and there's all this ground underneath that I could be using, but if I plant anything there, I'm not going to see it. So I've been slowly removing some of the bottom leaves. And this year, what I'm going to do is actually put a tomato trellis. You guys are going to see me struggle to put one on if I can. And next year, when this thing is burning coming back up, I'm actually going to move it more closer to the wall. Probably on, um, <laughs> on this side of the rows that's in this bed. And the rose that's in this bed is Mr. Lincoln. So it'd be more in the back versus more forward. And hopefully that helps resolve the issue. So let's see if I could get this guy into... You know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to single-handedly. <laughs> so you guys won't get to see me struggle. Well, maybe. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No, I'm probably going to destroy the plant. So instead, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to plant some aquavicious or columbines. These are some that I grew from seed from a mix called... Um, Balo's Double. I bought them from, I believe, Lowe's. They were from Burpee. Now, I'm probably going to discuss this in another video, but really quick. Um, not to throw any um, shade on any of the American seat nurseries, but a lot of them have um, struggled with maintaining their seat stock. So they might be selling something that is supposed to be double, but instead it comes out single. Um... I think that's what happened with some hollyhocks that I'm growing right now, but we're going to have to wait and see. So I'm going to plant these, and I have four of them, and I'm going to plant them in a drift right here. There's also a fern down here, a Dryopteris. I can't remember the species. That one I thought it was dead. So let's get planting. Mm, this is more difficult. Okay. I'll dig my hole. And aqua leisures are really good plants for early spring cover. They come in all types of colors too. There's a ton of different species out there, which I'm hoping to. Oh, there's a seed label in there. Um, to add some more to the garden. Typically, the European species tend to be more on the pastel shades, so more light colors. Also, they lean more towards the yellow, I mean, not the yellow, the blue and white spectrum. American species tend to lean more towards the red and yellow. 
the reasoning behind that is because, well, it's believed that the American species evolved to um, be pollinated by um, hummingbirds. And hummingbirds, there we go. Uh, it's a little bit too deep. Hummingbirds, and most birds, in fact, they have a very poor sense of smell. And their eye, like ours, is attracted to bright colors. So what's brighter than red and yellow? So typically, those species also, they don't have a scent. Because, like I said before, birds don't have a... They don't smell very good. They can't smell. So the plant doesn't waste time, waste energy producing a scent. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't grow the American species. Again, they're, they're native to the Americas, and they also really nice colors i mean you're talking bright red bright yellows there's one of them that i really want to get my hands on that's um uh what's it called annie's annual sells it sometimes and it's called uh aquilegia ex examia e x i a m a i believe it's a really nice plant and it has long stalks and the flowers, they snake. It's a California native. Texas has a couple native species as well. This one wasn't fully rooted out. There you can see some of the root system, but that's okay. And excess manure I could just put in there. Boom. Texas has a couple of um, native species as well. One of them is Aquilegia cristanthii. It's a yellow Aquilegia. And it, um, it's long blooming and it's more um, sun tolerant than some of the other species. It's a Chihuahua Desert native. And you can sometimes find it in um, some of the shrublands. I'm hoping to be getting a camera stand so my hand won't be shaking. You guys can see better what I'm doing. Aquilegias are somewhat Depending on the species and the variety and how well bred they are, um, they could be long lived or they could be short lived plants. But they will self seed with abandon, which kind of makes it difficult if you're trying to keep um, species varieties because they're very promiscuous. So that means you can have two different species and they will interbreed with each other, which will give you some cool hybrids. But if you're trying to keep the bloodline pure, that's making your job difficult. Um, I've been doing some research to see if there's um, any way to propagate them vegetatively. So like by cuttings, so you get asexual clones of the same plant. And I'm probably going to experiment with that later on. Probably with these, since these are the cheapest. Um and see what happens and I report back to you guys what is this it's a mass there we go yeah you can't see the leaves are always in my face okay Last aquilegia is the smallest. I'm going to backfill it, push it in, put some. And just like that, they're planted. Now, the last thing I need to do is give them some water, and they're ready to go. And we'll see how they do, and I report back to you guys on how they come out. So really quick on the design, I planted them in a wave. 
So it looks a little bit more natural. Typically in my yard, I start off as plant one and done. I'm um, kind of more of a plant collector and I don't have that much space. So I like to just get one plant. But I've um, recently learned to appreciate the role of repetition. And I think aquilegias make a good um, plant to do that because they're airy. They're not bullies and they intermingle very nicely with some other plants. And having some repetition in any planting, any planting scheme where you're a collector or not kind of unifies it and makes it look more natural. So we'll probably come back to this bed later on as I plant more stuff and we'll check back up on the Aquilicious. Thank you for watching and like, comment, and subscribe.